Coming up on our show today, we'll send it over to Sammy and Shirelle at the desk for your school news. Then I'll update you on the vinyl chloride spill in New Jersey. Then we'll send it over to Anton for news updates from Palestine, Egypt, and Turkey. Your iBlock News starts now. Good morning and welcome to your iBlock News. I'm Sammy Schwartz. And I'm Sherelle Gray. And these are your morning announcements. Students and faculty come to the Fellowship Halls for a yoga class sponsored by AIM High Yoga on Wednesday, December 5th at 7 p.m. All money given will directly to Plymouth White Marsh Girls Indoor Track. It is $10 per person. Girls and boys, hope to see you all there. There will be a 2013 Boys Tennis Team Information Meeting Thursday, December 6th room and room 24 immediately after school. Bring your enthusiasm and readiness for the season. And now to National News with Louie. Every four kids are bullied each day. And one in five kids admit to being a bully. You may not think it's a big deal, but verbal abuse can really hit a kid hard. All the name calling can really start to add up. Remember, words stick. But with the help of just one friend, you can begin to peel away the scars left by verbal bullying. You can be the helping hand in someone's life. You could be that person. we all work together, we can sweep bullying out of this school. Good morning, PW. I'm Louie Wine with a look at your national news. The shelter-in-place order that was in effect for Parsboro, New Jersey's last week's tra tra train derailment was lifted Tuesday night as the evacuation zone was extended to about 100 more homes, officials announced at a press conference on Tuesday. Police could be seen going to door-to-door door door in the newly evacuated areas to alert residents that they needed to leave. Officials say the extended evacuations are because of the, elevated, the elevated levels of vinyl chloride in the air. Shelters in place was shelter in place was after officials detected elevated levels of vinyl chloride in the area. Paulsboro residents were forced to stay inside their homes with the, the, their windows and doors closed. A shelter in place goes into effect whenever emissions or vapors spike. The shelter in place was first ordered Monday after 6 a.m., lifted later that day, and then reinstated again at 6 p.m. On Tuesday afternoon, the Coast Guard said the air was in, is safe outside of the new evacuated zone, meaning most residents can get back to business as usual. Mail delivery in the area will resume, although customers who live within the evacuation zone must go to the Gibson Town Post Office to retrieve their mail. The Environmental Protection Agency continues to monitor air, air samples in the 12-plus block radius surrounding the site of the train accident. They say the air quality is currently not in a, at an acceptable level and vinyl chloride remains in the air. The State Environmental Protection Agency says there isn't enough, there isn't a long-term fear of environmental concerns with water quality in the area. What was revealed that a crane was on its way from Tuesday from New York City to lift the breach rail car from the Mantua Creek. It is the same crane that was used to lift the airplane involved in the miracle on Hudson. Drivers and other lift operators are also needed. Residents and even some legislators were fed up with the time it has taken to remove the 600 to 800 gallons of the chemical still remaining in the breached car. Crews deal with the breached vinyl chloride car first. The Coast Guard says another car in the water has ethanol in it and has not been breached and that, that, that the other cars that derailed did not contain any chemicals. Evacuate, evacuated residents can go to the St. Michael's Club for further assistance with hotels, vouchers for laundry, child care, gasoline, and other services. The center will be open all night Tuesday to assist with their extended evacuations and return to normal this morning at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Conrail says another 100 hotel rooms are secured for the newly evacuated residents. The Red Cross set up a shelter in case all the new d displaced residents who couldn't find a hotel room would have lodging available. The woman who was listed as the world's oldest person died Tuesday in a Georgia nursing home at the age of 116. Bessie Cooper died peacefully Tuesday afternoon in Monroe, Georgia, according to her son, Sidney Cooper. Monroe's 
is about 45 miles east of Atlanta. Cooper said his mother had been ill recently with a stomach virus, then felt better on Monday. On Tuesday, he said she had her hair set and watched a Christmas movie, but later had trouble breathing. She was put on oxygen in her room and died there about 12, 2 p.m., Cooper said. Bessie Cooper was declared the world's oldest person in January of 2011. Last year on Cooper's 115th birthday, she celebrated with friends and relatives, enjoyed two small slivers of birthday cake, and was serenaded by a by a musician from Nashville who sang Tennessee Waltz. Sidney Cooper said his family will likely hold a funeral for his mother later this week. Bessie Cooper was the first Georgian to hold the world record. She was born in Tennessee and moved to Georgia during World War II to look for work as a teacher. The title of the world's oldest person now belongs to the 115-year-old Dina Manfredi of Johnson, Iowa. The oldest person of all time was Jenny Carmen, a French woman who lived to be 122 years old and died in 1997. That's all for your national news. I'm Louis Wine. I'll see you back here on Friday. Have a great day, PW. Dave eats breakfast every morning to prepare for his daily challenges. John, on the other hand, never eats before class. He shows up late, and sometimes not at all. As you can see, he has trouble performing well in school. Unlike Dave, who receives straight A's. Here at PW, we know the negatives of skipping breakfast, so your school provides it for you. A full breakfast is only $2.10. This includes the made item along with milk. You also can get either a fruit or juice. Some of the healthier choices include whole wheat or low-fat items. Make your way over to Cafe West, where every day of the week they make a different breakfast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Anton Smolik with your international news. The UN General Assembly has voted overwhelmingly to recognize Palestine as a non-member observer state and moved strongly opposed by Israel and the U.S. Palestine President Mohammed Abbas said this was the last chance to save the two-state solution with Israel. Israel's U.N. envoy said the bid pushed the peace ba process backwards, while the U.S. said the move was unfortunate. The Palestinians can now take part in U.N. debates and potentially join bodies like the International Criminal Court. Assembly voted 138 to 9 in favor, with 41 nations abstaining. In the West Bank, crowds celebrated the vote by waving flags and chanting, God is great. For the first time, there will be a state called Palestine with the recognition of the entire world, said Amir Hamdan. Today, the world will hear our voice. In further news, police have clashed with protesters in the Egyptian capital, Cairo, where tens of thousands of people have gathered outside the presidential palace. The protesters are angry at what they say is the rushed drafting of a new constitution and by President Mohamed Morsi's recent extension of his powers. Mr. Morsi was in the palace but left as the crowds grew, sources there said. Many of those gathered outside the palace in the suburb of Heliopolis chanted slogans similar to those directed against the regime of former President Hussani Mubarak during the uprising in February 2011. Tear gas was fired after protesters managed to breach a barbed wire cordon surrounding the palace, correspondents say. The police quickly retreated, allowing protesters to get closer to the palace walls. Eighteen people were injured in the brief burst of violence, but none seriously, the official Maine News Agency reported. Large crowds remained outside as night fell, while thousands of demonstrators also gathered in Cairo's Tahir Square. We spent 30 years being betrayed. We won't believe Morsi. He'll remain seated in the chair and not leave it, said one protester. Mr. Morsi adopted sweeping new powers in a decree on the 22nd of November and stripped the judi judiciary of any power to challenge his decisions. He also call it, called a nationwide referendum for the 15th of November on a new constitution, which opponents say has been rushed through and fails to protect the rights of minorities, particularly women. Mr. Morsi, who narrowly won Egypt's first free presidential election in June, says he will give up his new powers once a new constitution is ratified, but his actions have brought out thousands with his supporters and his opponents in recent days. Several newspapers refused to go to press on Tuesday or printed blank front pages in a protest of what they say is the lack of press freedom in the Constitution. In the other Middle Eastern news, NATO has approved the deployment of Patriot anti-missile batteries along Turkey's border with Syria. The long-expected move emerged from a meeting of NATO foreign ministers in Brussels and amid growing fears that Syria could use chemical weapons. 
NATO Secretary General Andres Fogh Rasmussen said the ministers had unanimously expressed grave concern about the use of chemical weapons. Syria has said it would never use such weapons against its own people. The meeting of the 28-member Western Military Alliance foreign ministers in Brussels follows a request from Turkey to boost its defenses along the border. NATO said it has agreed to augment Turkey's air defense capabilities in order to defend the population and territory of Turkey and to contribute to the de-escalation of the crisis along the alliance's border. Recent intelligence assessments have indicated Damascus is contemplating using ballistic missiles potentially armed with chemical warheads. Speaking after the meeting, Mr. Rasmussen told the reporters the four ministers had unanimously expressed grave concerns about the reports saying any such action would be completely unacceptable and a clear breach of international law. He would not give further details on the deployment, but said it would ensure effective protection of Turkey against any missile attack, whether carrying chemical weapons or not. NATO officials have previously made cl clear such a move would be purely defensive. That's all for international news, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Anton Smolik. Have a fantastic rest of your day, PW. That's all for today's announcements. I'm Sammy Schwartz, along with Louie Wine and Cheryl Gray. Have a great day.